Uh, in other news, we're going to turn it over to GE so he can present new science this week. GE. Uh, yes. Uh, in, in new science this week, we have uh, the uh, human genome uh, includes foreign genes that uh, are not from our ancestors. Um, <clears throat> So this is an article from uh, Cambridge University, and uh, or well, it says University of Cambridge. Uh, <clears throat> it starts off by saying many animals, including humans, acquired essential foreign genes from microorganisms cohabitating their environment in ancient times, according to research published in, published in the Open Access Journal Human uh, Genome Bio uh, Biology. The study challenges the controversial view that animal ev evolution relies solely on genes passed down through ancestral lines and suggests that, at least in some lineages, the process is still ongoing. Um, so, uh, you know, pretty much what, what that means is that microorganisms that were living with these animals as they were evolving apparently somehow affected the uh, DNA and allowed them to have new DNA introduced into them. So, um, let's see. It goes on to say, the transfer of genes between organisms living in the same environment is known as horizontal gene transfer. It is well known in single-celled organisms and thought to be an important process that explains how quickly bacteria evolve resistance to antibiotics, for example. Horizontal gene transfer is also thought to play an important role in the evolution of some animals, including nematode worms, which have acquired genes from microorganisms and plants, and some beetles that gain bacterial genes to produce enzymes for digesting coffee berries. However, the idea that horizontal gene transfer occurs in more complex animals, such as humans, has been widely debated and contested. Lead author Alastair Crisp from the Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology at the University of Cambridge said, This is the first study to show how widely horizontal gene transfer occurs in animals, including humans, giving rise to tens or hundreds of active foreign genes. Surprisingly, far from being a rare occurrence, it appears that this has contributed to the evolution of many, perhaps all, animals, and that the process is ongoing. We may need to reevaluate how we think about evolution. Now, uh, you know, with them saying this, uh, kind of, that kind of makes me worry about uh, about you know some some uh, creationist or whatnot, uh, you know. Uh, throwing around the idea that, that evolution has changed, and so you don't need to trust it. It's good that it changes. See, like new information like this shit right here allows us to make better decisions about these theories and change it so that it better represents reality because, you know, it's not really a good thing to be living, uh, you know, uh, opposite to reality or, or with the uh, uh, unreal, I guess, um, uh, notions about the world. Uh, it can be very dangerous if you do. Now, of course, on this kind of uh, you know scientific scale, it's not. But like, let's just say, for instance, uh, you know, you didn't um, you didn't change the way you thought about how the planets revolve. You'd still be thinking that Earth is the center of the universe. So the fact that that you know this is, is pretty good evidence for us to change how we think about evolution or anything or or, or, or any other theory that it could. Um, you know, change the idea of we we need to investigate it. If it needs to be changed, then we need to change it. That way, that we can better represent reality. So uh, that's your new science for the week. Okay, so everybody, wait, 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 wait. So everybody is not a science guru, and I know you know I'm not a guy who's like extremely invested in science. So I don't know what that actually means per se, and a lot of times, hey, I'm just being honest here. Not everyone is an extremely scientific individual. So what I was going to ask is that GE put that into a bite-sized layman's version for some of the viewers like me who may not be able to understand all that scientific jargon. Because I have to spend like 30 or 45 minutes just breaking down an article on something 
relating to science so I can understand it. Not ashamed to admit that. Uh yeah. Uh so well I mean I mean basically what what all of this um uh it means uh, is is that you know as as animals were evolving and whatnot uh, it, you know it, it's been highly uh contested and, and debated that you know uh, other micro orbit organisms that were living in the in the environment had an effect on the evolution of, of some things and so you know um you see it in single celled organisms where uh you know new genes are inserted into these things, like, like with the bacteria that it was talking about uh them being able to produce a new enzyme. Uh, I mean, th this, um, <clears throat> you know, th this is this comes into the uh, whole realm of of that creationists are putting out there that that you can't add information to genes or whatnot. It, it's pretty clear that you can, and uh, this new information right here says that uh, it occurs way more often in in the higher or more complex animals. Uh, as well as the single-celled ones. So uh, what you have is is that that is another possible uh, method for mutation uh, as things are evolving, and so that just tacks on to it because you've already got the miscopying uh, whenever RNA goes through and copies. Uh, that's one possible thing for mutation, and then now, now we also have this, uh, which is another possible route for mutation uh, as organisms are evolving. I know Dieter was wanting to say something. I hope I didn't fuck up. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to comment on a very similar situation that came up a couple months ago. It might have almost been a year at this point, where it was kind of demonstrated that the hormonal environment in utero can actually have an impact on how the baby, like, genetically develops. And this is, like, Lamarck shit, which is kind of what made it really funny when it came up. Because obviously it's not Lamarckian evolution at all. And for those who don't know, Lamarckian evolution is the one where it's like a baby giraffe literally tries to stretch its neck to reach leaves, and it's babies that therefore will have longer necks. That still never happens. But the fact that there are, there's like literal environment changes DNA, that wasn't a thing that we really thought about too much before, which... It, it perfectly goes in line with evolutionary theory. It's just like these sort of things kind of are fuel for people who don't understand the theory to look at it and go like, ha ha, evolution is wrong. Ha ha ha. And it's like, no, it's not. We just understand more now and you understand even less. That's all I had to say. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, honestly... Uh, uh, what you had just said about the uh, Lamarckian uh, type of evolution, <laughs> that reminds me of that one Bible verse. I, I bet Aeolus knows it, uh, but it's the one where the guy puts uh, you know, some, some goats or cows or something in front of a spotted tree, and they start fucking, and then when their kids have, have offspring, then they're going to have spots. That sounds a whole lot like what you just said. So it, it, it doesn't surprise me in the least bit. I'm just like, wow, there's a quote-unquote science term for it. <laughs> no, the Lamarckian so thing, it, just, it was the only thing they could come up with that made even the least bit of sense. But it's because they had no understanding of like genetics yet or environmental attrition or how anything played on anything having to do with genetics. So they're just like, yeah, you know, you know, them fat families are filled with fat kids. That must mean it's genetic completely. Or that family's really fit. That means all of the kids are born fit, right? Yeah. Well, we're now, scientists. Now, 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 now well, hold on. Well, now you're you're treading in dangerous territory because we we do know that there are certain body types. We put studies done studies into this, and we know that. A lot of people that have these quote unquote like perfect bodies have a lot of genetic things going on that gives them the advantage for that body. And we know that it can come from the parents. So you gotta be very careful when you, you know, travel down that road. Coming from it's the fitness not... perspective here. I, I know I shouldn't be arguing fitness with Mr. Shirtless Wonder here. But <laughs> 
it's seriously people his facebook it, it it's the most like emasculating thing i've ever seen in my life but <laughs> the there is as a matter of fact some genetic characteristics that can make people a bit predisposed to a certain kind of like fat to muscle to other tissue ratio but i was talking more of like obesity <laughs> I know. You, you know, you're always the guy who's, like, trying to sabotage the the main point, so I was kind of playing you there. Oh, yeah, because that's all I do. I don't I don't say anything <laughs> substantive. That, that's right. You caught me. No, we just like messing with you. But 